Hey there, Saints. Pastor Dave here with another weekly devotional for you this Wednesday. Hope you're doing well today. Uh, Last week, we had a reading from Jonathan Edwards on the affections. That's kind of his terminology for why we do what we do. And I want to continue that idea this week with another passage. He says, A person who has a knowledge of doctrine and theology only, without religious affection, has never engaged in true religion. Nothing is more apparent than this. Our religion takes root within us only as deeply as our affections attract it. There are thousands who hear the word of God, who hear great and exceedingly important truths about themselves and their lives, and yet all they hear has no effect upon them, makes no change in the way they live. There are many who hear about the power, the holiness, the wisdom of God, about Christ and the great things he has done for them, his gracious invitation to them, and yet they remain exactly as they are in life and practice. I believe that no one is ever changed, either by doctrine, by hearing the word, or by the preaching and teaching of another, unless the affections are moved by these things. No one ever seeks salvation. No one ever cries for wisdom. No one ever wrestles with God. No one ever kneels in prayer or flees from sin with a heart that remains unaffected. In a word, there is never any great achievement by the things of religion without a heart deeply affected by those things. Saints, last week we saw that we always have reasons for what we do. There's always some kind of motivation within us to respond to the external Uh, actions or stimuli around us. It could be uh, from our sense of pride, from our sense of integrity, from our sense of compassion, from our fear, from our anger, from our boredom, or from our curiosity. But there is always something in us that, that moves us to act in the ways that we do. We don't do anything if we don't feel like doing something. And it's true in our faith life just as much as in our secular life. We always have reasons for what we do religiously. This can be kind of confusing or even frustrating for people like me, in particular pastors, who have a calling to reach people with the gospel, to to explain the truths of God to the community around me. If you have an evangelical sensibility about you, you might have run into this too. But the problem can be that when we talk to people about God, they don't always respond in the ways that we expect. When we share the good news of the gospel, when we share about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, when we share about the love or the miracles or the the amazing things God has done, sometimes people just kind of ho-hum about it, don't they? Or, or they just don't seem to have any sort of response. And for those of us who do feel something when we hear about what God has done, it's hard to, to understand and put ourselves in the mindset of someone who doesn't feel any kind of response. Edwards helps me out here because he explains that there really isn't anything that I can do. There isn't, you know, some magical combinations of of words or phrases. There isn't some kind of understanding of theology or doctrine that is necessary for me to express in order for someone else to respond in the way that I'm hoping they will. It just doesn't work that way. What has to change is the person's heart. And I'm not in control of that. I'm never going to be. God's spirit working in the human heart is what can produce that response. It's when we feel what God has done. It's when we have an emotional reaction and connection with the work of God. That's when we will act in new ways. And I think that's a relief in some sense for people who feel like it's our job to change the world or to change the people around us, it's not something that we're capable of doing. We are not going to be the behavior modification squad that we might have thought of ourselves as. God's spirit can do that and God's spirit alone. But we need to be worried about communicating the truth the best we can and allowing space for those affections 
to get people moving forward. Saints, that's your devotional this week. I hope that it's helpful. I hope it's worth thinking about. I hope you're doing well today and staying healthy. Um, I'll be praying for you. Please keep praying for me, and I will see you all again soon. Take care, Saints.